Hi, everyone. Um, hands up if you've not seen something like this, a tablet, or if you don't acknowledge the existence of these things. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know that electronics are pretty much everywhere in our lives nowadays, and uh, you'd be surprised that most of them are computers. In fact, um, I've been to a hospital for some reasons uh, the other day, and it turns out that the um, uh, temperature sensor or the thermometer is in fact a computer nowadays. So everything is. A, a tablet has a bit of casing, a battery, uh, that sort of thing, um, a screen obviously, but most of it is the green bit which is just a normal computer. Um, made out of silicon just like any other computer part. And computers are in fact uh, quite simple systems. So there's a memory and there's um, a processor and in between um, instructions from the program get shoved from the memory into the processor which executes them side, um, piece by piece and responds to uh, things from the outside world, say uh, uh, pressing a key or something. Uh, data comes um, to and fro from memory and to make everything faster you can make everything just, just beef it up. So more memory, uh, uh, bigger and faster everything. The trouble with this is um, the processor, if it doesn't have um, sort of um, data, well, if it, if it runs out of data, it's a bit in trouble. Um, I'm going to illustrate this by using soup. So if you, uh, if you want to, uh, to order soup, you just go at the bar, they, they know that they have to bring you soup, they have the ingredients, it's done in a second. The processor is extremely fast when it has the right ingredients, when it has the data. If it doesn't have the data, because it's fast, its waiting time is exceedingly long. It's like going to a place like this, ordering soup and waiting for it for about two years. It's completely insane. So you don't want the processor to be starved of data. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that apparently people who know about these things work on. So this is a bit of a processor. Um, it's just a picture with several, th uh, several hundred million components. Um, to make the processor faster, you could complicate it quite a lot. So you'd, you'd make a behemoth that does very complicated things very, very fast. But it turns out it's better to put many small workers side by side to work together on a particular program. It's a bit like divide and conquer. You don't have a large guy, you have many small guys. Uh, and these guys can be just like this, um, the same sort of um, processor, where they can be specialized, like communications or 3D and so on. Because speed is not the only thing. Uh, you want functionality from your devices, connectivity to everything, you want 3D graphics, you want uh, maybe some sort of feedback from them, and they all need to be power efficient. So that's um, extremely important when designing these, these circuits. And, but there's, with the parallelism, there's a problem, because if you have, say, four processors, and they all do piece by piece these four instructions of making mashed potato, you'd end up with four equivalents of mashed potato, digital equivalents of mashed potato, um, from them coming out. But if they all, each of them has one um, utensil, they will wait for, one, um, for, for the output of one to the other. So there's a lot of waiting. You don't want waiting. Um, Captain Caveman here could do very well with the things on the bottom, but not that much with the things on the top. So, Silicon technology that we use for our chips is extremely good for um, processors, but it's not good for large area electronics. Think displays. We all have displays in everything, and most of them can be quite large. Um, they are made on glass using, again, silicon, but a very thin layer of silicon on a, a large support of glass, and they just get cut up into pieces. Sorry. Um, the problem with glass is that it's very rigid, and if you drop it, it breaks, and uh, it's kind of heavy. So the idea is, why not make the displays in our electronics flexible by making them on plastic? It's a fantastic idea, but then you need to overhaul all your uh, fabrication processes. Because what happens is that on glass you can make things at very high temperatures, which you can't on plastic, for a start. So silicon is a bit like a Formula One car on a racetrack. It's the fastest thing around. It's extremely suited to, this, to its environment. So that's why we're using it for all sorts of things. But if we're going to make plastic electronics or electronics on plastic, we simply can't use silicon. We can't use um, the large vacuum chambers and the very high temperature processes. So 
it's a question of horses for courses, right? We need devices and processes and materials um, ad adapted to that particular application. And uh, this means that we may need to find materials uh, that replace silicon in terms of, of their um, utility. And some of these materials may be organic semiconductors. And organic doesn't really mean that's something from the um, sort of overpriced veg in, um, <laughs> uh, in Waitrose or whatever. Um, it means that they're chemical compounds of carbon and they're semiconductors like silicon. The best bit about them is that they can be made into inks, so we can make solutions of these things. And we can then start to print electronics on plastic like we do newspapers. That'd be extremely cheap and flexible and um, in, in a large volume. This is a printer that we have in the lab that's just an inkjet printer. But what it does is it prints plastic, it prints gold, silver, all sorts of other metals. Um, and virtually anything you want that can be made into a suspension into ink. This is the very researchy bit where I show a picture that I'm going to send to a, a proper paper. Um, so it, it's just um, hairline sort of um, features that I've printed with that, uh, with that printer. So the future, I think, is um, everything coming together, including the processors, literally everything coming onto a sheet of plastic that you can fold or roll into a cylinder or do whatever with, and it'd be extremely cheap just like newspapers nowadays, but with all the functionality of our tablets and our notebook computers and so on. So when I'm not in the lab, I'm there. Thank you very much for listening.